Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and adab, my dear students. This lecture is about the load carrying capacity of a tension member. This is pertaining to six semester diploma in civil engineering students and a part of the steel structure design subject. So in this we will learn how we calculate the load carrying capacity of a tension member. So first of all, we see what this tension member is all about. What is a tension member? So this basically goes back to a steel roof truss. A steel roof truss is consisting of number of members and there are certain loads which act on the nodal points of a steel roof truss. These are the nodal points, this A, B, C, D, E, F and G. We assume that all the load is distributed and acting over these nodal points. So this is the load acting over the nodal points. This load consists of various loads, that is the dead load, live load, wind load, seismic load, snow load, etc. Depending upon the combinations, we distribute the load among these nodal points and then analyze the force, magnitude of the force and direction of the force in each member. Say for example, this is the member, we analyze this truss and calculate the load in this particular member, the magnitude of load in CG. Similarly, this is another member. We see the magnitude of load in this particular member in Fg. See in this particular member, since it is compressing the joints together, so this is going to be a compression member. This is going to carry axial compressive load, so called a compression member. This is pulling the joint, so this is going to have tension in it, so this is a tension member. So this member is known as a tension member or it's also called a tie member. This is known as a compression member or it's called a strut. So depending upon the nature of the force, nature of the stress in the particular member, we categorize this as a tension member or a compression member. A tension member necessarily will carry axial tension as the stress in it. Then we will come to the load carrying capacity, the safe load which a tension member can carry must be equal to some area and some stress. So area into stress. Since this is member, this tension member is going to be connected to a gusset plate at certain junction at certain length, this area is going to be reduced when we apply, when we use certain rivets, little holes, so area is going to be reduced. So area is to be modified to a net here. We will have to calculate net area. This stress is of course the permissible axial tensile stress. So ultimately we will have net area and axial tensile stress in the member. That product will be the safe load carrying capacity out of this sigma AT is to be taken as 60% of the yield stress of the member so 0.6 times Fy then comes A net A net is the net area of the member the minimum area at a particular section particularly at the joints that is to be calculated and this depends upon the connectivity the members which are connected how the members are connected to each other and to the gusset plate the connection type riveted connection or welded connection so IS 800 1984 identifies various cases for calculating the net area and hence the load carrying capacity of that particular tensile member. So case 1 is a single angle section which is connected to a gusset plate. So we'll first see how this member is going to be connected, how it will look like. This is a gusset plate and the member is connected over here. The member may be connected by a riveted connection or a welded connection. So this is ISA, this is the gusset plate, this is the connection, this is the riveted connection. Out of this, this is the connecting leg, this is called the connecting leg, this is called the outstand. This 
the length is identified as L1 and this is L2. Okay, thickness of the member T. Ice code says that net area for this particular case must be taken as A1 plus A times A2. Okay, where A1 is the area of connecting leg and must be equal to L1 minus N into D, reduction for the number of rivet holes at a particular section and end correction. End correction is T by 2 multiplied by the thickness of the member. A2, since it is not directly connected to the uh, gusset plate, it must be n into d is not used here it is only the end correction t by 2 multiplied by t then we have reduction factor for the outstanding leg because it is not directly connected to the gusset plate and hence behaves just like a cantilever its load carrying capacity is to be reduced we reduce the area so k is 3 times a1 divided by 3 times a1 plus a2 this is always less than 1 so reduction factor we apply or we use all these values in this equation and hence calculate the net area of this particular member. So this is case one where we have only a single angle section. Then we have case second. Case second is a double angle section. Double angle section. When it comes to a double angle section, we have two choices. Either we connect the, those two angles to the same side of a gusset plate or we connect it to the either side. So this case is pertaining to same side of gusset plate. They are connected to the same side of gusset plate. So how this will look like? This is the gusset plate. We have two angle sections to be provided on the same side. This is one of the angle sections, another angle section, riveted connection over here. So this is two IAC this time, gusset plate, riveted connection. Okay, now I score says that net area in this particular case is taken as A1 plus K times A2 same formula but this a1 and a2 are also same a1 is the area of the connecting leg this time we have two connecting legs so two times l1 minus n into d minus t by 2 multiplied by the thickness of the member a2 is again two legs so l2 minus t by 2 multiplied by the thickness of the member and k is a value different here this is 5 times a1 divided by 5 times a1 plus a2 so reduction factor we get all the values and put it in this equation to calculate a net when it is provided on the same side of gusset plate now had this been a welded connection in place of riveted connection though it must have been pro uh, well provided with a fillet weld over here in welded connection this term n into d this becomes zero you have to use the other part of the formula like this one so whatever whenever there is a valid connection this n into ter, uh, d term will go and the other part remains same there will be only n correction for both the legs that is the connecting and the outstanding leg so this is the second case where we have a double angle section on the same side then we have third case we can provide double angles on either side also so third case is double angle section which are connected to either side or both sides of the gusset plate so we'll have a gusset plate in between now this is how it will look like we'll have a gusset plate in between and this is the angle section another angle section on the opposite side so they are back to back like this Arrivated connection over here. So these are two YSA, the gusset plate in between, arrivated connection. So in this case, we have two options. Either tack rivets are provided or they may not be provided. Now tack rivet is what? If this double angle section 
is connected here to a gusset plate we have the connection main connection over here if riveting is continued along the length of the member if we provide more rivets along the length of the member for stiffness these rivets are called tack rivets so they may be provided may not be provided in case they are provided then i score says that net area of the member shall be taken as the gross area minus the rivet hole area if riveted connection is there so we'll have to detect the rivet hole area this gross area is directly available from the steel table net hole, uh, rivet hole area depends upon the number of the rivets and into d to t this is only when tack rivets are provided if tack rivets are not provided in the member it becomes similar to case 1 that is a net shall be again a1 plus k times a2 a1 and a2 a1 is the area of the connecting leg there are two connecting legs here a2 is the area of the outstanding leg there are two outstanding legs here and k is same as a1 that is 3 times a1 3 times a1 plus a2 this is how we calculate the net areas and then calculate the strength of the tension member in case it falls in one of the three cases we may other than these angle sections we may have some other members also which are used as a tension member say for example we have a flat section which is used as a tie member then these three cases either of the three cases is not applicable we'll have to see how to deal with the net area here say if this is the tie member in form of a flat and connected to a gusset plate by certain rivets this is the gusset plate this is the flat there are certain rivet rivets provided in a particular pattern maybe a chain riveting pattern maybe staggered pattern say if it is something staggered like this here a net we will have to look for this a net is the minimum possible area along a particular cross section so we will have to look for it we will have to say select section 1 2 3 4 and 5 So if I select this is the failure plane, this being the failure plane, I will have to calculate this area along this one to five, which will be b, b minus n into d into t, where this n is the number of rivet hole deductions. We have one, two, and three rivet holes which are being deduced. we may have to follow some other pattern also say the failure takes place somewhere like this say failure is like this so failure plane is 1 2 this is then 6 7 we'll have to calculate area once again now it will be along 1 2 6 3 7 4 and 5 again we will have to reduce the area of rivets now the rivets are 1 2 3 4 and 5 in number so this n will become 5 but at the same time we are moving along a staggered path also so this area shall be b minus n into d plus plus for the staggering that is n dash S square divided by four g. How many times we are staggering? One, two, three. So n will be three here. Four times. Four times we are staggering. N will be four. S will be the staggered pitch. G will be the gauge multiplied by the thickness of the member. We will have to see which area is the minimum one, which is the minimum one that we will have to use and calculate the strength as a net into sigma a t. This is the minimum of the area. So we conclude that. the strength of a tie member a tension member depends upon the net area and the permissible axial tensile stress of the member if it is a single angle section we'll have to follow case 1 and we'll have to look for welded or a riveted connection over there 
If it is a double angle section, we will have to see whether it is connected to the same side of a gusset plate or either side. Accordingly, we will have to deal with case 2 and case 3. If it is not an angle section, if it is a flat or a channel member, we will have to follow certain failure paths to calculate the minimum area of the particular member which we will be placing in as a net and finding out the strength of the tension member. Thank you.